it was fierce and I could not sleep at all the entire night. Those seven demons came and they attacked me mentally. The second priest said, yes, you have to pray and fast. He says, if you can pray and if you fast, you will get through this. I'm a cradle Catholic. I was born in Norfolk, Virginia. I went to Catholic schools during my formative years. Two wonderful parents. Unfortunately, my father, uh, he had cancer. He passed away. So it was, a, it was a very big loss and it was very, very tough. And as they say, when the man of the house is not around anymore, going to church somehow just doesn't become the priority didn't really have that example anymore, that role model anymore. Once I started college, I went to mass less and less. It was just more of a once in a while thing. It was also right around that time I started going on a different path, playing a lot of basketball, involved with a lot of fitness, and just wanted to take my game to a higher level. It was very much into nutrition, experimenting also with fasting that could help. I was also looking for a performance in success. I wanted to do well and make more money. And I started reading a lot of personal development books. It was good in the beginning, but then I kept reading more and more and more. And that led me to the new age. And I really didn't even know it at the time. Reading lots of books by Deepak Chopra, Wayne Dyer, Marianne Williamson, and those type of books get you you more to be centered on the self. You know, if you're going through a lot of anxieties or difficulties in your life, it's taught in that school of thought, become self-reliant and depend on yourself, work on yourself. In a way, become like your own God. I didn't see it that way at that time, but that's what it was leading me towards. A few years go by and I meet Sita, my wife, and I was at that time so far out of the church I get married, and but it was not in the church. It was a civil marriage, okay? And on top of that, I knew that she was in a previous marriage and was divorced, and for me, it just didn't matter. And the feelings of emptiness, anxiety also became stronger, but I could not quite put my finger on it. Just, I, I didn't know really what it was. One day when I was driving my kids to school, I dropped them off. And I was listening to a podcast, and the podcast was on the topic of the differences between Christianity and the New Age. And I listened to that person speak about it and all the differences, and then I said, wait a second. I had to stop my car, and I said to myself, I'm on the wrong path. I'm on the wrong path, and I'm going to hell. I did not go to work. I went straight to my house and I threw away every single New Age book that I had on my bookshelf. And I had a lot of them. I put them in this big trash barrel and I almost filled it up with books. And while I was at it, I threw away all of my CDs and records because I was very much into collecting rock CDs and albums. Also living that rock and roll lifestyle, partying and, and that sort of thing. So I got rid of every single one of those books and then I was still panicking and I really did not know what to do. I picked up the phone and I called a good friend of mine who is a priest now and he's been a priest for over 35 years. And I called him and I was just telling him briefly what was going on and I asked him can you give me a confession over the phone and he said Lewis well, you cannot have a confession over the phone I'm gonna tell you go to your local parish and that must that's something that must be done in person uh, he did say a prayer for me over the phone and sent me off and I did and I went and for whatever reason confession was not being offered that evening and I had to spend a whole day just in pure anxiety, just waiting for the next available confession. I went the next day and I was very nervous in the line 
for the confession, trembling maybe a little bit and just didn't know really exactly how or, or what to say to the priest because it was a good while since my last confession. So when it was my turn, I laid it all out with the priest. I just said everything from my heart. You know, the priest said, is there anything else? Anything more? And, and I just kind of said, isn't that enough? And I could feel the priest's compassion, almost felt like he was putting his arm around me as he was praying for me and absolving me of my sins. I left there like something just totally totally overcame me. It was a tremendous feeling. I went to my car and just stayed inside my car for about 10 minutes and all I could do was cry. I just cried and let it out and I was very emotional by myself really for thinking that I've wasted all those years. And it was such a feeling of guilt. But at the same time, I also felt, wow, now I have a new beginning and this is the start of something different and new. I just felt such at peace and felt so good. The next day it was a little different. You know that uh, verse in, in Matthew, I think it's Matthew 12, you get rid of one demon and then all of a sudden seven more come, even more fierce? Well they did come. Those seven demons came and they attacked me mentally. It was fierce and I could not sleep at all the entire night. And then I would have to go to work the very next day. I could not focus, I could not concentrate, I could not really do anything real productive at my work. And this went on for a few days and I was really starting to get concerned because I, I had never really had any sort of mental problems or even a thought of going to a psychologist or a therapist or anything like that. I was like, no. But I was really going to that point of just feeling like things were really, really bad uh, of such. And this is all just pure discouragement. The feelings and thoughts in my mind were that, hey, Lewis, you're, you're done, man. You're, you're your life is over. There's no second chance for you. You blew it. You know, you grew up as a Catholic. You had the most wonderful parents. You went to Catholic schools. You had everything, but you chose to go a different way and now it's too late. And I honestly thought that. I really did. Some thoughts came into my mind that I need to go do more confessions. And I went to the church the next day and I did another confession. And to my surprise, the priest said, you need to correct your marriage. You have an invalid marriage. This was a total shock to me. I was so much out of the church that I just didn't realize it, didn't know it. And he said, go see the deacon and the deacon will help you and, and work through this. It was the best thing ever. It was a long, I thought long, two-year process. I thought that was the longest two years I had ever gone through. But we learned so much, grew so much spiritually. It was truly the very best thing that happened to us. As this is going on as well, I'm still having trouble sleeping. And my wife gives me a YouTube video. She sent it to me on my phone. And so I start watching it. And it's a video on the testimonial story of Father Donald Calloway. And I, I never heard of him before. And so I started listening to him and I was really surprised of all the similarities of Father Calloway and myself. And so I really listened because of that. I mean, he used to live in Norfolk, Virginia. He was very much into surfing. He was very much into rock music. He was, when he was younger, had a very promiscuous lifestyle. And I thought to myself, wow, if that guy can turn things around and become a priest and become a very important priest at that, I can do it. I think I can do it myself. Picked up the book called Confessions by St. Augustine and that gave me a little more inspiration too because I had read that he had problems in the flesh and lived that very promiscuous lifestyle until he had that conversion. 
I started reading those books and then also became interested in what Father Callery was saying about the Blessed Virgin Mary. So I Googled about Mary. Some videos came up and I started watching and the videos were taking place here at St. Teresa Catholic Church. I saw the background and I recognized all the buildings and inside the church and everything. And there's this guy talking about the Blessed Virgin Mary and how to be involved. And so I listened to it and watched it and everything. And the very next Sunday, I saw that guy at church afterwards. That's Gabe Castillo. And I approached him and I said, I saw your video. He just said in a very humble way, I make a lot of videos. <laughs> and we just kind of left it at that. And I started watching more of his videos to learn more about the rosary and the Blessed Virgin Mary. When I came home, I told my kids, we need to start praying. In fact, I demanded it, that, that they do that. And I was so embarrassed when I had them that night and I did not know how to pray. I did not know how to say the rosary. And one of my kids said, here, Dad, let me show you. Hail Mary, full of grace, and, and so forth. And I was like, wow, I was so thankful. The people who run the CCD classes here at St. Teresa did such a fine job that my kids knew it way more and better than me. So then a little more time goes on, but I am still not at that point where I'm at ease. I, I still have anxiety. I still can't sleep occasionally. And so there was a church three minutes from my office. I decided, well, let me go there. I want to go to the daily mass. And the priest at the conclusion of the mass said, is there anybody here that would like to stay and I will pray for you? And nobody raised their hand. And I said, yeah, me, me. And so I went to him and he had another priest with him as well as two of them. And I told him a little bit about what was going on with my life. And he laid his hands on me. He was praying for me. I really felt the Holy Spirit. And it truly helped me. And on my way out, the second priest said, yes, you have to pray and fast. He says, if you can pray and if you fast, you, you will get through this. I remember fasting when I was young when I was an athlete. But back then I did it for other reasons. Back then it was more for, you know, just to help me have more energy, to perform better and, and those sort of things. And it was the hardest thing to do because I had to rely totally on myself, my own self-will to succeed in fasting. And that's very hard. Nowadays I do it and it's it's, I, you know, I give it to the Lord, I give it to Mary, and it's a breeze. I listened to that priest and I started doing it. You know, I'll try to pick uh, days when I'll only have uh, liquids, whether it's water, coffee, maybe a tea, and that's it. And I'll go th the entire day like that. And that really will humble you. And that's where Mary, and that's where Jesus and God, that's where they want to touch you. The evil one knows when you are fasting and it kind of like just gets away from you and it's it's really a great feeling and it could be something where you start small you can have one meal a day or even maybe two meals a day even if you you are fasting for spiritual reasons there's going to be great physical benefits as well so i i personally do intermittent fasting several times a week usually about five days a week the other two i have a really good breakfast in the morning but typically I'll, I'll have my last meal around eight o'clock at night, wake up in the morning, maybe have a drink of water, a cup of coffee, and then go to about 12 o'clock or so. That sounds like a long time, maybe 15, 16 hours. But once you get used to it, it's really not that difficult. It becomes part of your lifestyle. The fasting gave me the power to take action and do things, whether it was to go to confession on a regular basis, adoration, go to mass on a regular basis. And little by little, things really started to change. I received a lot of graces. I am so grateful.
The rosary became a daily part of my life as well. I would say it every single day. Grace has started to come to me after 20 years on my job of striving so much and trying to attain the next level. I got a promotion just like that. It was like I wasn't even looking for it, really. It just fell on my lap. My relationship with my wife became even better. One of the most important things also is that I determined for myself an ultimate end. Living my life with that end in mind to have eternal salvation, to be in heaven one day, that, that is the ultimate end. So then when you make all of your daily decisions, even you know the purpose for waking up in the morning or going to school or going to work, all has to relate to that ultimate end. When we do not have that ultimate end, our life is in shambles. That was probably one of the biggest things for me is to find that ultimate meaning of, of what I'm striving for. It's really also a good feeling to know that my kids and my wife are on that same track as well. Prayer is so, so important, not just as a family unit, but as an individual as well. And we really need to be praying for other people that need a change in conversion. I am so grateful because I know for me, it was my mother and it was my wife. My mother has said the rosary for ever since I can remember as a little kid. She now has Alzheimer's dementia, but still continues to say the rosary. And when I visit her, she will say, hey, you need to pray, you need to pray. Always still constantly telling me, Lord Jesus Christ, please be with us tonight. We thank you so much. Mary, we know you're here with us and guiding us. Hail Mary, full of grace, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mary Mother, Mother of God, pray, pray for us sinners, now, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brother, thank you. All right, man. You did it.